attack on Eddie. It, it must have taken us past the Denorius belt and brought us here. The same thing must have happened to the ancient Bajorans. I know I'm late to the party regarding this topic, and a wonderful video has been crafted by E.C. Henry, but honestly, I don't really do videos until I feel like I have a different take or can substantially add to the topic and what's been said. So I guess, after so long, now I do. Ultimately, the question in today's video essay becomes, is Cardassia a lost Bajoran colony? It may not be as crazy as you think. Before we delve too deeply into this, it's important to note that lost colonies and forgotten species is something really common for the Trek universe. In fact, two of the founding member worlds of the Federation have ties to species that were either forgotten or their people left and colonized another planet. And if the Romulans are an offshoot of my Vulcan blood, and I think this likely, then attack becomes even more imperative. The most obvious one that is known is that of the Vulcans. Of course, a sect of Vulcans left following under the raptor's wing to become what we know as the Romulans. This is common in both Star Trek The Original Series as well as Enterprise. We know that Earth loses colonies on the daily in some of these episodes. In fact, in the Enterprise episode Terra Nova, the denizens of the lost colony there are forced underground and start to shift from something human to something human plus. So given enough time, it would be easy to see how, in the Trek universe at least, major changes occur over time to a colony that had been lost to time or disagreed. And for that to happen in the Trek universe is fairly easy. Computer, run a genome projection algorithm. If the Hadrosaur had continued to evolve over the last 65 million years, extrapolate the most probable appearance. Extrapolation complete. Display life form. That creature napping in sickbay is a dinosaur. Another example that people don't think of commonly is the Voth. While the Voth aren't ancestors of the human, they are native to Earth and another species that left their home to go to places elsewhere. In fact, this gives credibility that maybe Cardassians and Bajorans were just on the same planet. They coexisted until one left for the stars. Cardassians often have an association with reptiles, so again, it matches. So species breaking away from the original planet and creating their own colonies where they slowly shift into something different from their ancestors is well established in Trek. It is very plausible that Bajorans could have left Bajor and became Cardassians. It's a nice theory, but is there any evidence to it? There actually is. More evidence than you think. As I've stated before, there's information provided by E.C. Henry, which is not 100% compelling for me, but definitely is a good piece of circumstantial evidence. In the Trek universe, most all species are seen to have a common ancestor. This we know. Our scientists see that the primordial oceans of many worlds, where life was in its infancy. The sea codes directed your evolution toward a physical form resembling ours. However, that doesn't mean that interbreeding is really that easy. Unless you're human. It's literally in our DNA in the Trek universe to mate with other species and create hybrids. That is a major facet of what humans do. This is seen in The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and even Voyager. But anyway, it is possible for two different species to have children, but depending on the matchups, medical intervention may be necessary. What species need assistance to procreate and what species don't isn't exactly clear, but we know definitively that Bajorans and Cardassians can have children without any problem or medical assistance. Like E.C. Henry points out, accidents happen with birth between the two species all the time. If medical intervention was required, it would be realized before birth. Now to be fair, births like this could be explained by the fact of how close the two planets are to each other. They're basically next door in comparison to the wider galaxy. So it could be reasonable that species so close together could have similar environmental impacts on their physiology that allows them to breed. Again, not a lock. Obviously not all species even on the same planet can breed, so the fact that they can may just be lucky DNA, or unlucky depending on who you are. Another interesting link between the two is their culture, and trust me, they're actually very similar. Before the fall and military coup, we get the impression that Cartasia had been a place of art, of stories, of discovery, and more. Cardassians were artisans, poets, lovers, and religious individuals. This only changed when the planet's resources began to dry up and people were not able to feed themselves. What do you know of Cardassian history? I know that once you were a peaceful people with a rich spiritual life. What did peace and spirituality get us? People starved by the millions. Bodies went unburied. Disease was rampant. Suffering was unimaginable. 
We initiated a rebuilding program. We have mandated agricultural programs. That is what the military has done for Cardassia. Her belly may be full, but her spirit will be empty. The military stepped in and the culture shifted from one of arts to one of expansionism and ultimately fascism. These cultural achievements would continue to be something that Cardassians touted, but fundamentally, that mentality had been destroyed. It's important because we know that the Bajorans were nearly the same, at least originally. They were a culture that focused on the arts and expanded their works across the stars. In fact, when we look at the ancient Cardassians, as I stated before, they were deeply religious. Which does tie all of this in. If ancient Bajorans had actually made it to Cardassia, they would have brought their religion with them, and that could have shifted over time. The religion of the prophets could have become that of the way. In fact, it even keeps with the themes of Deep Space Nine, where religion is considered a good thing generally, and a lack of religion can be pretty bad. But depending on what religion you believe in, you could be a good or bad person. All of this leads us to the last piece of circumstantial evidence that you've already heard. Main power's offline. We're moving at war. How can that be? I don't know. The fact that the Bajorans effectively figured out interstellar flight. As has been mentioned countless times, a Bajoran lightship was a type of early Bajoran spacecraft that was created utilizing solar cells as well as wood. Okay. The vessels utilized the sun in order for it to get from point A to point B. From everything we can see, the ship was either lifted off using another type of propulsion from the planet or constructed from a base that was in space. This vessel, we find out, was actually capable of faster than light speeds, meaning that it could leave the system. Now to be fair, we don't really have any evidence that the Bajorans achieved warp drive. But again, they had achieved faster than light travel. So it is feasible that multiple Bajorans, if not an entire colony's worth, decided to set out on their own and they had found what would become Cardassia. They brought their religion and their art, which would slowly start to turn and change as environmental factors impacted them, and then ultimately would become Cardassians. Any evidence of this that was found by the Cardassian government after the military coup would probably be covered up and never discussed. It could not be more appropriate that your arrival coincides with the discovery here on Cardassia of an ancient crash site. A site that our archaeologists believe contains the remnants of one of the Bajoran vessels whose journey you have just recreated. What an amazing coincidence. Yes, isn't it? Possibly a deep state secret. Ultimately, all of this is circumstantial and there's nothing definitive, but I thought it was really interesting. What do you think? Are the Cardassians actually Bajorans or is it all just a coincidence? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next Lore Reloaded.